results you can feel. Omega XL is available in St. Lucia. Visit your local pharmacy. In the wake of the revolutionary legislative amendment in Antigua and Barbuda, Chairman of the local cannabis movement, Andre Pancho de Caris, says St. Lucia appears to be ahead of the game where the OECS is concerned. He says in January 2017, Cabinet approved the formation of a commission with the mandates to investigate and assess the process of legalization of the herb in St. Lucia. The seven-member commission was formed two months later. But as Antigua has made it legally acceptable for individuals to possess small amounts of cannabis, he hopes that the same happens here, sooner rather than later. In fact, he repeats his stance that if St. Lucia is to move in that direction, it is senseless at this point for individuals to be incarcerated for this offence. Is Mr. Chasne going to do that? Well, that's up to him. But I believe that our police force over the years through education um, have eased up really and truly. You know, you very rarely have somebody getting roughed up for a five bag or a spliff. I mean, public smoking is unacceptable and we'll obviously have to deal with that with legalization. We don't want to see anybody smoking in public. We don't want to smell any ganja in public. So this is, would be one of the regulations. But Mr. Brown said, listen, when all of those things come to pass, we will enforce them. But for now, just ease up on people. You know, let the police focus their, 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 their activities on more serious crimes. The cannabis movement is working in close collaboration with the seven-member commission consisting of Michael Gordon QC, Dr. Andre Matthew, Dr. Gilberta St. Rose, Dr. Julieta Raymond, Mr. Michael Antoine, former police commissioner Cuthbert Phillips, and Barbara Vargas. According to Dicaris, due to a lack of funding, the cannabis movement was tasked with providing draft regulations for marijuana use and possession, which will be presented by the end of February. These recommendations will be considered along with that of CARICOM, following which a draft document will be presented to Cabinet. Another document that has to be submitted is a change in the wording of the Misuse of Drugs Act. In Schedule 2, um, cannabis is, is categorized as a Class A substance and it was miscategorized because one of the criteria for a substance A it is, is that it has no medical use. And we all know it has had medical use for the last 4,000 years. So it was miscategorized in the first place, so we need to right that wrong and remove it from the Section A. Once you remove it from Section A, I mean Class A, then a lot of the laws that are pertinent for Class A substances are no longer um, pertinent for cannabis. So you don't have to rewrite the whole, um, all the laws within the Misuse of Drugs Act. Should the government of St. Lucia choose to adopt these regulations, Dikaris the says there will be a six-month public education program to complement the decriminalization process. But public health and cannabis often cross paths as well. People are mixing black tobacco with ganja and dying of COPD. They have people make uh, baking with ganja and they, it, they're getting too high and ending up because they haven't been educated. They're, they're minors consuming ganja. There's, there's abuse of ganja. So we need to work with the Ministry of Health and have public service announcements actually educating people because there are negative sides to it. But regardless of all the negative sides, nobody should be going to jail for victimless non-violent crime. Affectionately known as Pancho, the Keris has been at the forefront of the cannabis decriminalization movement in St. Lucia for two decades, having first advocated for the use of hemp for industrial purposes in 1998. Miguel Favre. HTS News Force.